Harry's Wife, Part 78.10. The Case, The Stolen Balls. No, this isn't a new Harry Potter book. Harry Potter and the Case of the Stolen Balls. It's not a Nancy Drew mystery. It's not the famous Five. It's a Tudor production. Who else? Premier insight into the world of Harry's wife and gaining understanding about narcissism. And whilst you're here, it's incumbent upon me to remind you that there are hundreds of other videos besides that about Harry's wife. Take a look around in my playlists. Search my channel. You will see that I cover not only Harry's wife, but many other famous people. But I also cover many different facets and aspects of narcissism, narcissists, our victims, the narcissistic dynamic, with practical ways as well for you to help yourself. This is the best place for finding out information about narcissism. It is a huge depository of information which you can utilise. And you can join the millions of other people who through the years have accessed and utilised my material to find freedom. You can also access the Knowledge Vault. See the link in the video description, which takes you to further materials, which go into greater detail and specific to certain situations. Use those. And of course, you can interact with me by organising a consultation. And through my bespoke advice and assistance, gain exactly the right information, guidance and information to ensure that you achieve the freedom that you richly deserve. It does appear that there are some viewers who fail to realise that there is this wealth of additional material, and therefore this is a short reminder of that. Now, on to the case of the stolen balls. Well, whose balls might these be? Whose balls were potentially being juggled outside? Whose balls perhaps might have been squished against the window looking like a pair of pink pancakes? Well, of course, they're Harry's, but he's no longer in possession of them. Yes, Harry, the young chap who's a little bit fiery, a little bit feisty, a little bit woo, a little bit wah. He liked to drink. He dabbled with the drugs. He liked to strip off for a bit of the poker. He dressed up as a Nazi as part of bad taste. He's come out with some rather unusual observations at times also. He's a bit of a lad, as old has, and people rather liked him. He was never going to be king. He was the spare, but he was the clown prince, the fun prince. Whilst William had to be serious and dour, taking his responsibilities very serious, Harry could have a bit of fun. He could go large. The weekend has landed, and people rather liked that about him. And then all of a sudden, it stopped. Harry's go-getting attitude evaporated. His, in your face, I'm a bloke, melted away into the ether. And instead, he became the ginger poodle, emasculated, castrated, neutered, trooping behind Harry's wife. You've seen all the pictures, you've seen the video evidence, guided by the hand, pushing him here, guiding him there, directing him over there, subservient to the glare, nervously twisting upon that ring as he wonders what to do. Perhaps does Harry look in the mirror and think, who did I used to be? What have I become? Well, at this juncture, the answer is no, because although his balls are, have been stolen and are missing, he hasn't yet realised it, because he remains in the fog of the sustained devaluation. He, as the intimate partner primary source, first receives the glorious golden period when he's seduced. Everything's wonderful. It's all blowjobs and bacon butties, Back scratching, guffawing together at boxed sets, being mirrored and thinking, wow, this chick's really into me. I'm so, so happy. It's a whirlwind dervish as the seduction coils around him and the tendrils take hold of him. And then when his fuel becomes stale or he's not providing it often enough or is in large enough quantities, like every other victim of the narcissist who is the intimate partner primary source. Then, of course, in those circumstances, you 
are devalued. And you experience a sustained devaluation, which goes on. It's the roller coaster with which people are familiar. The up, the down, the up, the down. One minute everything's okay, the next moment everything's horrendous. And you are left puzzled and bewildered as to why that actually is. You don't understand. And you are perplexed as to why this is all happening. Everything seemed so wonderful before. And now it has all gone to pot. And of course, driven by an unfamiliarity with whom you're dealing, namely a narcissist and your own heightened emotional thinking, you are left blaming a third party event or more commonly, you blame yourself. Harry believes that he's been saved from a toxic family because of the manipulations of his wife. He's fallen for it and he remains stuck in that position. You can see from the footage of the pictures, he doesn't look happy. He's downtrodden and he's downbeat. And that's because his balls have been stolen and are being worn as earrings by his wife or kept in a handbag somewhere of the many ones that are mentioned by hello. The fact is, he doesn't have them. And this is common for an individual who finds himself in the sustained devaluation. Whether male or female, you are not the person that you once were. We have separated you from your friends and your family to make you easier to control. We stop you doing the things that you once enjoyed, initially under the auspices of, oh, we want to spend more time with you. And we make it worthwhile because we're so fun, interesting, full of providing with spicy poontang. But then all of that fades away and you realise that you're stranded on an island with no way out. Your support networks have been removed. You're not the person that you once were. Your self-confidence has been eroded. Your self-worth has been diminished. Your self-esteem has plummeted. You may find yourself stressed and anxious, physically assaulted, losing money, always bending over backwards to try and please and placate and appease the narcissist lurching from one day to the next. Harry finds himself in this position. His balls have been stolen, taken away from him. And the interesting thing is, many people realise this. They see the marked change in him, but they don't know what to attribute it to. Yes, they see it as a consequence of being involved with Harry's wife, but they don't realise that he is a victim. There are those, of course, that think he's just as bad as she is. Outwardly, that is an understandable mistake to make. He does appear to have signed up to a joint enterprise, but he hasn't. He's basically done so under duress. He has done so through multiple misrepresentations. He isn't aware of what she is. He isn't aware of the reality of what is going on. And he has been conned like so many other people. And he's fallen for it. He believes what she says. He believes that what she dictates is appropriate. It's shown with regard to his own behaviours towards his family. And again, this is relatively common, that the victim, who is the intimate partner, primary source, where their balls have been stolen, they end up falling out with family and friends because they listen to the narcissist and they don't listen to their family and friends any longer. And when the family and friends protest about the behaviours, they believe them to be difficult. They believe them to be trying to obstruct their happiness. I'm happy with her. Stop getting in the way. You're just envious. Why do you have to try and spoil things between us? And of course, that isn't the case. But this individual, having been subsumed within the manipulations of the narcissist and their own emotional thinking, which, driven by their addiction to the narcissist, causes them to fail to see what is actually going on, remain in this position of being stuck. Many people can see that Harry is not the person that he once was, that he's changed, that he's altered, and not for the better. And this is wholly as a consequence of his ensnarement by his wife, the narcissist. Some of his poor behaviours are as a consequence of following what she does in order to try and keep her appeased. Some of his poor behaviours are because his own emotional empathy for other people has become reduced as a consequence of these external stresses meaning that his own narcissistic traits come to the fore, so he lashes out through anger, argumentativeness, vanity, pride, etc. Many people do not realise this. And, entertainingly enough, 
an article by Kyle Smith in the New York Post highlights this change in a rather humorous way. And it's well worth allowing you to be entertained by Mr Smith's writing because it actually sums up a very serious point. It demonstrates the stark difference pre-Harry's wife to post-Harry's wife. But again, the writer doesn't truly understand what it is that has caused him to be this way. Mr Smith writes as follows. Why are the governor and mayor of New York taking a meeting at the World Trade Centre with the two Mexiteers? Harry and his wife threw away their royal obligations as vigorously as John Kerry threw away his Vietnam War service ribbons. I say we treat them like any other tourists. These people are entitled to do no more bowing and scraping than the Kansas City Royals. Harry's wife's brand, California New Age, I'm still on a journey of self-discovery middle age, and Harry's palace-born entitlement have intermingled to create the most appalling British-American monster since Madonna's Madge period. At least Madge didn't mumble about climate change and global poverty, though. What has become of what was once the world's most badass prince? Until just a few years ago, Harry was proof that macho royal is not an oxymoron. In sharp contrast to his jug-eared, limp handkerchief of a father, Prince Charles, he used to roar around Afghanistan in his helicopter, giving hell to the Taliban, his red hair blazing like a testosterone torch. Take that, everyone who ever saw a ginger walking down the street and yelled out of his car, Ronald McDonald, carrot top or leprechaun. Not that like anything like that has ever happened to me. The article continues, since he had his tender bits chopped off by the megalodon, Though, Hammerin Hank has become Girly Harry, an Instagram influencer, whatever that is, who posts cringy pictures of himself with John Bon Jovi, alongside the squishy sayings of 80s motivational speaker Leo Dr. Love Biscalia. British fortitude enabled it to survive the Great War, the Third Reich, and even the European Union. But now, one of the Yukon Science has, has surrendered to oprification. Instead of firing rockets at medieval Islamo-fascists, Shallow Hal sits there holding his wife's hand while she emotes about her maiden pain for the cameras. Somehow, Thor became Ed Sheeran. Snap out of it, man. Whatever happened to Grandma Liz's stiff upper lip or Grandpa Phil's wicked sense of humour? The Queen was literally bombed by Nazis for a year and never even said, how perfectly beastly. If anyone had suggested she ever go on a worldwide It's So Hard To Be Me tour, she would have told him to stop being such a wet, which is British for wussy pants. In 1992, the year a massive fire at Windsor Castle took out 115 rooms and both of her son's marriages also went up in flames, Elizabeth said, 1992 is not a year on which I should look back with undiluted pleasure. Hell yeah. The British way's mastery of the colossal understatement. There's a reason why people say... Slay Queen and not Preach Duchess. The Queen also called that year her Annus Horribilis. What a classy way to say that sucked. Harry's wife, on the other hand, gets duly mocked by Piers Morgan. I wouldn't believe her if she filed a weather report and she files a formal complaint and not even in Latin. As if to passively aggressively troll Her Majesty, instead of giving their daughter a solid English name that suggested equally the ability to wield a scepter or to fix trucks in World War II, H&M gave the baby the monarch's childhood name, nickname Lilibet. The thought bubble over Her Majesty's indomitable hat when she heard this news can only have been, uh, thanks. It's as if a descendant of Winston Spencer Churchill decided to honour the great man by naming his boy Churchy, or Spence Bro. And not since the Duke of Windsor turned out to be a bit of a Nazi has the royal family suffered an embarrassment on par with H&M's ghastly Time magazine cover. This looks like Harry is a hairdresser, and he's looking into the mirror, explaining what he did to her layers, observed Irish comic an Irish comic on Twitter. Harry used to be a swashbuckling six foot one, according to the time photo. He's now the same height as his wife, five foot six. He's shrinking before our eyes. The next time we see him, he could be the size of a parakeet, and the Maleficent Markle will be carrying him around in a cage as though nothing had happened. She'll continue complaining about how rough it is to be her, and once in a while, he'll let out a little peep or chirp. And there's an article, of course, mocking the situation that Harry finds himself with his stolen balls and written by Carl Smith of the New York Post. He's not the only one that has seen all of this and it demonstrates quite clearly the situation that Harry finds himself in. He is no longer the person that he used to be, yet he still doesn't see it. 
Whether he will, well, that's something I've talked about elsewhere. But it is important to demonstrate just the marked change that has occurred in Harry. You can see it. Other people can see it. Mr. Smith has wrote about it in an amusing manner. But the fact remains, Harry is trapped. He doesn't realise that he's become something else. There'll be moments where he feels lost. There will be moments where he feels sad. But he's still bewildered as to what's causing it. And he still has some way to go to wake up. Which, of course, is the irony as he finds himself trapped within the Queendom of Woke. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.